Welcome back, strangers. Memorial Day weekend kicks off the vacation season in the United States, and each summer more than 20 million people travel to the beaches of South Carolina. Polly's Island is located 40 minutes south of Myrtle Beach, and it's a great way to spend an entire vacation or an evening checking out all the sights in the town if you're staying nearby. The area is known for its history, beaches, and local legends. Today, we're going to tell you three haunting tales from Polly's Island, South Carolina. Spoiler alert, the last one is a heartbreaker. The Gray Man is the most famous ghost in the area that is seen roaming the coastline of Polly's Island. He is the most famous ghost in the area because every time he's appeared, a devastating hurricane or horrendous storm has hit the area. He was first seen in 1822 and was last spotted in 1989 right before Hurricane Hugo hit South Carolina. He is always seen wearing gray clothes along the beach before vanishing. In some cases, he speaks to people, telling them to flee the area. In others, he is just seen as an ominous warning of the destruction that's to come. There are several stories and legends surrounding the identity of the Gray Man. Some believe he is the ghost of a man who was traveling from Charleston to visit his fiancée. Unfortunately, he and his horse got caught in quicksand like mud in the marshes surrounding Polly's Island and he died. His spirit haunts the shore in search of the woman he loved and warning others of impending dangers in the area. Other variations of the story say that he is Percival Polly, who the island is named after. Legend says that he still watches over the area that was once his beloved home. Others who have witnessed the Gray Man say he wears a long coat and is dressed almost like a pirate, leading them to think he may be the ghost of Blackbeard who is doomed to wander the shores he once pillaged for all eternity, warning innocent souls of approaching danger. Those who are fortunate enough to see the Gray Man often credit him for saving their lives and sparing their homes. The local ghost received national attention when Jim and Clara Moore were interviewed after Hurricane Hugo by the show Unsolved Mysteries. The couple's home was spared during the terrible hurricane, and they witnessed the Gray Man before the hurricane hit. If you want to spend a night in Polly's Island, then you must stay at the legendary Pelican Inn. It's an eight-room beachfront bed and breakfast that was originally constructed in the late 1840s. It is one of the few surviving original homes that hasn't been destroyed by hurricanes, because it is protected by the highest sand dunes on the island. Plowden Weston married his wife Emily in 1847. The fortunate couple received multiple estates and lots of money as wedding gifts from their affluent families. It didn't take long for them to build a summer home on Polly's Island that would eventually become the Pelican Inn. The two enjoyed their years together until the beginning of the American Civil War. Weston joined the fight to defend South Carolina and became the commander of the Georgetown Rifle Guard. He quickly gained the respect of his men, many of whom would eventually visit the Pelican Inn after the war. Sadly, Weston's life was cut short when he finally returned home. He died weeks after being diagnosed with tuberculosis. His death began the hauntings that have occurred in the Old Beach Inn. One is the ghostly figure of a man in a Civil War uniform that is often seen briefly in the corners of guests' eyes. Some believe this is Weston in his old gray Confederate uniform, which had led many to think that not only does he still watch over the inn, but that he is the gray man of Polly's Island. However, no one has ever seen the gray man's face. Weston's wife, Emily, is also seen by the guests of the inn. She is known to leave her perfume smell around to welcome new guests to the inn, and others catch a glimpse of a young woman in 19th century's clothes thought to be Emily. When the sun goes down sometimes, you may encounter ghostly dogs along the beach behind the old inn. Another local legend says that a caretaker for the inn once had two Boston Terriers that he kept with him, until one swam into the ocean to save a drowning boy's life. Regrettably, the dog passed away soon after, and the other terrier eventually died of loneliness. However, you can still hear the dog barking and playing in the night. The Pelican Inn was closed for the season when we visited Polly's Island, but we would love to stay there and investigate the inn ourselves one day. It has great reviews online, and if you decide to spend a night there, the Pelican's website says to be sure to ask for Caroline to tell you about the inn's spooky history. The All Saints Church Cemetery, you will find a strange grave that has the name of Alice inscribed on it. It is easy to find because of the rings and other gifts that people will leave behind to pay their respect to the grave of poor Alice Flagg. Alice's life reads like a 19th century Shakespearean tragedy. She was the sister of the very successful and wealthy Dr. Allard Flagg, but she fell in love with a man who was from an undesirable social class for her to marry, according to her brother. However, Alice defied her brother's wishes and secretly became engaged with the young lumberman who stole her heart. 
When Dr. Flagg discovered her engagement, he sent Alice away to boarding school in Charleston, where she quickly contracted malaria. Dr. Flagg graciously allowed poor sick Alice to return home, but it was too late. She died soon after from what those close to her believe was a broken heart. After her death, her brother discovered Alice's engagement ring attached to a ribbon under her dress. Enraged that his sister still defied his wishes even in death, Dr. Flagg took the engagement ring and threw it into the marsh so it could never be found again. He had her buried in the same cemetery as her family, but would not allow the family name to be inscribed on her grave. The ghost of Alice has been seen at the Hermitage, her family's old plantation. She is often spotted going up the staircase to her old bedroom. Others have witnessed a ghostly woman in a white dress walking out the front door of the Hermitage, clutching something under her chest. Visitors to the All Saints Cemetery often report seeing a young woman wandering the grounds, looking as though she's frantically searching for something. Some have encountered Alice's ghost in the marsh surrounding the area, desperately searching for her beloved ring that her brother hid from her in death. There is a local superstition that if you begin at the bottom right of her gravestone and walk around it six times counterclockwise and then six times clockwise, stopping at the letter A on her marker and leave Alice a token to ease her troubled soul and make a wish, then your wish will be granted according to the Atlas Obscura. We left a token on Alice's grave, but I hadn't heard of this superstition until researching for this script, and I found that there are a few other variations of this that you might want to investigate before visiting this heartbreaking site. Thanks strangers for watching. Where do you plan on going for vacation this summer? Let us know in the comments below, along with which haunting was your favorite. I hope everyone has a fun and safe Memorial Day. Thank you to those who have served in the military, and please remember those who died protecting our freedoms that we are fortunate enough to enjoy. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave us a comment and subscribe if you haven't already done so. It helps us out so much. We can't do this without you. Also, be sure to smash that bell button so you never miss a strangest video. And as always, stay strange.